Outrocast. Lamar, aside from having to do press, good day for you so far? It's a wonderful day. It's nice and sunny here in New York, and it's just a great day. And I'm keeping you from that by making you do an interview instead of enjoying that New York sun. So <laughs> thank you for doing this. It's a pleasure to be speaking with I, as many interviews as I do. Very few people are Tony nominated producers. <laughs> when somebody you meet somebody on the plane, you have to do the small talk and all that. And they go, what do you do? Do you break out the Tony nominated producer part? <laughs> Not yet. I mean, it really hasn't hit me truly. Uh, I'm still grasping all of it. It's just like a whirlwind and it's so exciting. Um, you know, people keep sending notes and texts and emails, you know, saying really nice things and encouraging. It's just a lot. So, you know, maybe maybe once it comes and goes, I'll, I'll really grasp it. Yeah. Piling on to that compliment right there. One of the youngest people to be nominated for that. And I had the pleasure of recently interviewing Eric Nelson. He's also of that young Broadway caliber yeah. same with Santy Nelson his wife is there a secret society of young Tony nominated Broadway producers <laughs> if there is I haven't gotten my invitation yet <laughs> there you go well hey production is only one of the things you've done you do have that acting background but what was it that made you say hey I also want to produce you know it was, it was really after COVID you know everything shut down and I just realized that as an actor, I'm truly always at the whim of whatever job is available to me. And I really had a come to Jesus moment, so to say. And I really realized that, you know, given my decade of experience and all the connections and the resources that I've amassed in that time, mm -hmm. I really use this to pivot and really try to find another sector of the industry that would go hand in hand. And, you know, producing was, was that option for me. I'm not a writer, I'm not a director. And I just realized that I have the business acumen and the creative acumen as well to be able to do both. And producing was the perfect marriage of that. So you can do line item budgets? <laughs> yeah, I just took a, I just left the program at Columbia for the past year. And, you know, lots of accounting and budgeting and spreadsheets and all, all of that. <laughs> yeah, the I love the producer stories because usually the producers have the best stories when it comes to any kind of a production. Because as the press person you usually just get the bio and the bio says it was funded from blank but usually when you find out how things are really funded or who was originally wanted for the role and all that that's more interesting than what you see on the stage or on the screen right but that also tells me that the producer is usually really good at keeping secrets actors are not known to be able to keep good secrets so is that a skill that you had to develop I've always been a vault. You know, a lot of my friends always tease me because, you know, I keep things close to the vest. And so it was an easy transition for me. I, I'm one who I like to announce things after they're already done, signed, sealed and delivered. And I'm not one to, you know, just go around bragging or, or talking frivolously about things. Hmm. We'll see what we could do about that. But uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> I know coming up, you are producing the Broadway revival of The Wiz. How long was that or has that been in the works for? Uh, that happened in the fall. I was approached in the fall by the lead producer, Brian Moreland. And, you know, I jumped at the opportunity. That's a, a classic. It's important to so many people in my community. And, you know, I thought it'd be the perfect next step following New York, New York. Believe it or not, in a high school production of The Wiz, I played bass in the pit band at my oh. weird, weird high school that decided to do The Wiz. But is <laughs> How's the production of The Wiz coming up compared to the original? Is it all the same music? Well, you know, Emma Ruffin's working on the book. And then, you know, we have Joquel Knight doing the, the choreo. And it's, it's going to be it's going to be reimagined in a way. Right. And, and it's very much so. It's going to be a, a new a brand new day for, for a, a new Wiz, you know, and it's I'm really excited for everyone to see it. Can't say much about it, you know, but. You, you can read between the lines there. <laughs> I can. There's a Variety.com embargo or a Hollywood Reporter embargo or something. But it's really great to see that that one is coming back. I mean, you look at the original cast and all that. When people talk about the five most important things Michael Jackson did, they never talk about The Wiz. Uh, Diana Ross, what a cast. Definitely now, Mill, yeah. When you were producing something like that, are you able to juggle multiple projects or does everything just go into one while you can 
Well, you know, in Broadway, there are lead producers and the lead producers, in this case, Brian Moreland is, is one of them. Uh, it's They mainly run the show. And then myself as a co-producer, you know, we're privy to going to co-producer meetings. We're helping with the financing and things of that nature. But the day-to-day -day running of the actual show is for the lead producers. Got it. Well, the fight is another thing that you have worked on recently. So it's one of those things where I get the vibe. There's a lot going on, but we can only find out about it when it's time to find out about it. Yeah, and you know, with the fight, I'm more of a lead producer in that capacity, and I also am, am acting in it. And you know, for us, we over the past year, we've done several readings. We did one last year with Daphne Rubin Vega, and we just did one recently at the Apollo. And mm -hmm. you know, that's literally moving that project along from incepts from its infancy all the way to getting it to the stage. So I have more of that every day, you know, on meetings with Africa, working on that, making calls, setting up meetings and things like that to really get that going. So you know, currently we're looking to get a, a production of it up in the next year or so, ideally. So that's been taking up a lot of time. That compares very differently to other fields where most people can only do one project at a time. For example, if you had a method actor and they decide that they're living as that character, they can't do cameos and this and that. If somebody's making an album, most likely they're just making that one album or writing that one album. But in your case, you're able to juggle different things. And it sounds like you work off of checklists and to-do lists. Yeah, because, you know, here's the thing in Broadway, right? You know, in many cases, you're waiting for uh, actual theater to become available for your project. Oh, <laughs> I never thought about that. I mean, Mrs. Maisel, that was one of the subplots, spoiler alert, of a season or two ago. Yeah. That they lost the theater and what are they going to do? Exactly. But, but that's real. Yeah, there's only 41 Broadway theaters. And when you think of the long running shows like Wicked, Lion King, Chicago, you know, it's very limited real estate. So you have to be working on different projects because you never know which one is going to be the one that goes. Hmm. Now, did anyone ever think of, hey, why don't we put in a 42nd and a 43rd theater? Or is there a mandate that says you can't add more theaters? No, you just know it's New York City. It's, it's, it's very expensive to, 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 first of all, find the plot of land that you can build a theater, especially right. in the, the actual location, because Broadway is, you know, confined to its actual location geographically in New York. So there's only but so much room to build further without just renovating the existing ones. Hmm. An interesting development I've seen in recent years is in the past, you could only get Broadway on Broadway. And now I, I was in ha uh, El Paso, Texas two weeks ago, and Hamilton was coming to the theater across the street from the hotel I was staying at. So it looks like, and tell me if I'm wrong here, that you can create a show that goes, okay, we'll do a year on Broadway, and then we're going to divide and conquer and be a long-term success by going national. Absolutely. You know, New York, New York just announced a week or two ago that its national tour is coming in 2025. The Wiz is starting as a tour this fall before it lands on Broadway next spring. You know, a lot of musicals, especially, always tour afterwards or before because it's just they're, they're, they're built for that. You know, not everyone can make it to Broadway and it's all about making it accessible for, for the masses. Right. And mm -hmm. it just has that model to be able to do so. Now. Speaking to you in your career, is it true that Felicia Rashad helped give you your start? Yeah. I, a lie. Oh, okay. So that's true. Oh, it's true. She, I credit her with, with literally discovering me. Uh, we met in 2015. We were doing a, a reading for a screenplay that she was the lead in, and I had a role in it. And literally from that opportunity, she then gave me the opportunity to star in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom that she was directing the following year at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles. She didn't know me from Adam and, you know, we literally worked together for the first time there and she gave me that opportunity. I didn't even have to audition. Wow. <laughs> With veteran actors and actresses along the lines of Felicia, you, you just never know if they're the kind of person who primarily gives back to the arts and hangs out with other artists or goes, I'm off the clock. Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, no, she she's salt of the earth, you know, and, and I always tell this story. She's kept up with me over the years and really has been a key figure in, in, in encouraging me. A couple of years ago, I had a, a, an audition for Henry the fourth or fifth, I think it was. And mm -hmm. she came on her lunch break. She was doing a, a reading or some kind of a shoot in the city to meet with me to work on the material. 
you know, run through the I iambic pentameter for the piece. And that just speaks to her character. And, you know, she invited me to her house for Thanksgiving. She's just always been that figure for me. And I, I can't thank her enough. Well, that also speaks to your path as a producer. You know, the producer, whether or not people realize it, is the rare person who has to get along with the talent and the suits and know the money and know the craft, assuming you're a good producer, which right. obviously you are. It's, it's sort of being a jack of all trades without the master of none slight attached to it. And part of that is keeping up long-term relations uh, with talent. So in yeah. your case, are there friends givings? It sounds like a lot of social callings are needed to be Lamar. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. It's an interesting balance, right? Because foremost, I'm an actor, right? And I always make that clear to everyone that I also produce, but I'm also an actor. So mm -hmm. there's balance in that dynamic because sometimes another producer might want to work with one of my friends who, who's a famous actor and I have to toe the line between am I going to leverage that personal relationship or not? Because, you know, there's a balance. You don't want to just be a pipeline to just have these people's lives linked to others unnecessarily, right? So I have to always say, oh, you know, you can go through their agent or go through their manager, or, or, or I, if I feel so moved, I'll make the personal ask myself. Free advice, you don't even have to do that. Just say, hey, have you subscribed to IMDB Pro? You'll get the contact <laughs> off of there. <laughs> then you don't look like the bad guy. You look like the resourceful person yeah. who knows what they can do. Yeah, absolutely, I love IMDB Pro. And and so, you know, wrapping everything up here, we know about The Wiz, we know about the recent productions. What in general is the best way to follow you to know about the stuff when we want to know about the stuff, aside from just following the trades? Yeah, so actually Instagram. So my Instagram is at Lamar Richardson underscore. I'm also on Twitter at Lamar underscore Alfonso, A-L-P-H-O-N-S-O. You know, it's funny, I haven't even publicly announced The Wiz yet, so exclusive, you heard it first. <laughs> wow, I think I'm going to put a hashtag in that uh, social media post right there. So once it comes out, do, do you get the key to New Brunswick, New Jersey, the city? Is that, is that in the works yet, or is that a secret? Maybe one day. I mean, I, I haven't gotten a call yet. Maybe, maybe one day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, the, once that or or Duke or, you know, one of your prior accolades happens, there's going to be that way or that you, you can't get off the donor list. That's what I'm saying right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah. have to have that game plan. So then you send them to IMDB Pro if they want to get in touch with you. So full circle, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. My high school, uh, I went to North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics and, you know, they did a write up on me recently. And they also just did a post recently for the Tony nomination. And I can already see, you know, in years to come, I have to do like the commencement address or, or something of that nature. And I'd be happy to because, you know, I'm all about giving back, especially to places and institutions that were a part of making my career what it is. So once that happens, the honorary doctorate comes and ah. then you become... Dr. Lamar, what's your middle uh, initial? You said Alfonso? Uh, yeah, A, yeah. So then do you become Dr. Lamar A. Richardson in terms of your production credits that you have okay. to put the doctor on everything? Apparently, you know, I, I always, I, you know, I saw it's the season for Doctor of Humane Letters and all, all the different uh, awards that people are getting. So maybe, I mean, one day we'll see. Well, a lot is in the works. I'm really looking forward to it all. So, hey, Lamar, thank you for your time and thank you for doing what you do, putting positive, interesting art out into the world, revival or original. Absolutely. It, it's, it's, it's truly a, a great joy as an artist. Outrocast. <laughs>